Kia ora of lava and warm Pacific greetings to you all. Welcome to another episode of how to make a boomer shooter. In this episode, I want to focus on making or creating our first enemy as well as jumping into making some decorations. Pretty straightforward. Let's just jump straight into it, eh? So, on the in-betweens, I did do a little bit of map design just so I can place my characters in some interesting positions just so the player actually has obstacles or like a way in which to navigate the level in an interesting way. Yeah, nothing too important. You can have a look and copy it if you'd like, but let's just jump straight into making a enemy, eh? So the first thing you need to do when you're wanting to make an enemy is you go to this entity settings tab right at the top. If we click that, we get two um, tabs right here that we can click on. And obviously the one we're wanting to jump into is enemy settings. So let's jump straight into that one first, eh? So it'll pop up with this screen here and it's like, man, how do I, well, create an enemy. Well, the first thing you need to do is just head to this bottom tab right here. And if we click on it, it'll allow us to type anything in. So this is where we're going to create the name for our enemy. So I will call mine suit and we'll click this tick box right here. And now we have it created here, which is cool. And we got all of our settings right here. So we got the name, which I named as suit, scale one, health 100, damage zero, speed 128, and then radius 16, obviously the width, because I think they're all based on either cylinders or like capsule shapes, but yeah. And then drops is quite interesting too. So if we click this drop down, it'll let us select all of the items that um, a given enemy can drop. Might as well do it just to test it out. We got our attack delay, which I believe will be um, the intervals in which places attacking animation, but also when the attack occurs. So that delay between attacks, explosion radius, I think this should be for projectiles. I'm not sure. I have to test this a little bit more, but yeah, it'll pretty much be similar to that of a projectile. It'll be the area of effect um, when the given projectile hits something. Projectile speed, obviously how fast the projectile travels and then weapon spread similar to our weapon. So yeah, a lot of settings should be quite familiar to you from when we made our weapon. But yeah, I think the only other one is that's different will be um, delete after death. Oh, and I should go over this as well, full bright projectiles, I forgot to go over it, but essentially when this is ticked, all it does is it will enable uh, lighting when it comes to uh, projectiles and weapons. So when you fire, even with this, um, with regards to the weapons, when you fire a flash of light, like a muzzle flash will play and stop or turn on and turn off. So yeah, let's just jump straight into putting his um, sprites in. So if I go import, we have all these animations. We'll go idle, click that. We will navigate to, oh, little teasers, little teasers. <laughs> we'll navigate to our assets folder and we will go to enemies, suit. And we got all his PNGs here. Let's make it larger just so I can see what they look like. For the first frame, might as well use this one yeah usually when it comes to the enemy ai in this engine the instance in which they have a line of sight of you they will go into their chase state which means they will follow the player so anytime they see you even if it's a far distance they see you they'll instantly go into that mode and uh, start chasing the player and when they're close enough they'll either attack or um yeah i think they just attack so far so we'll go to yeah so that's idle for moving we'll go to one, two, three, and four. We don't need a projectile for this guy. We'll go to attack, and that'll be attack one, and then attack two, and then pain will be pain one, and pain two. I don't have these. Um, pretty much what these will be, will, uh, if I were to put a sprite right here, you'll have a custom image for when um, the player fires at the enemy and particles spawn. And uh, the image that the particles use will be this sprite right here that we put in here, as well as a custom sprite when it comes to blood on the floor. Yeah, quite detailed, eh? especially when it comes to these old school, like Doom, Wolfenstein style, Boomer Shooter, um, retro FPS games. So we'll go death. There's uh, death one, death two, death three, and then corpse. 
Ugh. Okay, these are the sprites for the animation itself. This will be kind of how it looks once it's all set up with the sprites I've provided. So we'll just click accept from there and then we'll import our sounds. So press sound, alert sound, what is that? Pretty much it'll be the sound that uh, this enemy will play the minute they have a line of sight of you or they see you. So that'll be that sound. Our attack sound will be obviously the sound in which our um, enemy makes when he attacks. The hurt sound will be when we hurt the enemy. And death sound will be when he passes on. We can press accept for that. And yeah, it's pretty much set up right now. I probably want to give him some damage, so we'll modify that right now. Um, his scale, let's see how, yeah, he's pretty small, so we might want to change that to like 1.2, maybe even 1.5, just to test. And we'll say he is shooting. So if I did not tick this, it would mean that instead of from a distance, try and attack or shoot, um, he would follow the player and once he gets to a certain distance with the player, like a close distance, he'll play that animation and attack the player. So that'll be more so for like melee specific uh, enemies. But since he is shooting, we will tick this one because we want to make sure he can fire um, with range. So he's pretty much done, which is good. We'll press accept to that. And we'll test it out, eh? So where do I find my enemies? Well, you can find it right here in this tab next to objects entities and there he is right there awesome there are also two tabs right here we got decorations and enemies we'll jump into decorations um after this but let's test our enemy first day eh? so we'll click on him and we'll place him or oh, i'll place him right here place another one right here place one in here maybe like there Ooh. and we'll place one right here nice now let's test that out eh I'm done, ready. Let's see the first guy. You're dead! Ooh, ooh. Whoa. Hey, got him. Yeah, as you can see, all the animations are in, the sounds too. You're dead! Rest in peace. You're dead! And just like that, we got our first enemy. Yeah, super simple, quite easy to do when it comes to this engine. Let's go into the other half, eh? Like I said, I wanted to go into making a decoration. So what are decorations? Well, they're pretty much objects within our game. And like, it's pretty cool because they can be like set dressing or interactive objects, depending on what you want within the context of your game. But um, yeah, so, um, how do we make a decoration? Well, we pretty much, it's kind of like going through the same process that we did with our enemy sprite. So we'll go straight back to entity settings and we'll go to decorations. So let's go to decoration settings. And then yeah, kind of a similar tab to our enemy one. So to create one, we'll have to name it. So with the decorations provided, I already know what I want this to be. So we'll go plant one. Oh, one tick box that and cool so we got our decoration here and it's pretty much got similar settings but except for these tick boxes but let me just go through it okay so name plant one scale same health yep radius size yep and then breakable so what this would mean was that health setting right here will come into effect and if i tick this if we attack um whatever object this is or decoration as the health lowers and lowers further and further when it reaches zero, obviously it would break. So that's what that's for. Solid means either that radius or the size of it will come into effect. So will this be an actual object we can jump on that we collide with? If I click that, that means yes, we can. And if that's unticked, that means it's, it won't be, but we can take it for that. Lighted. I believe this is if it's affected by the lighting within the engine. So if we go into um, putting in lights, if it becomes shaded because of those lights, you can tick this. So we'll just leave that for now. Uh, snap to ceiling. When we tick this box, what this will do is, um, let's say I wanted to have a uh, sprite object that I wanted to snap to the ceiling like a, a light or something, some kind of lamp. 
on, on top of it or like a chandelier you know i would use this to make sure when i place it it snaps to the roof of if we have a roof on our um, level it will snap to it disable culling refers to so pretty much it's um, if you don't want this to be rendered when we're not looking at it you um, will just leave this unticked but if you want it to always be visible even if the player is not looking at it we'll click that button there and then delete after break would similar to the enemy once it's broken it'll delete this or yeah it won't show a sprite if it doesn't have like a broken state so but yeah these are kind of the all i really need for this um decoration here so let's just import a sprite for it so we got idol death and corpse for this one we'll just need an idol so i will go back into our assets folder go to decorations and we'll go plant one there we go and there's our little plant there let's see what scale that's pretty nice and i don't want it to be breakable solid yeah everything's looking good that doesn't need sounds because it's just a decoration we'll just accept to that and as you can see here in our decorations tab we have our plant there which is cool so let me click on it and just place it down we'll just place it down there for now and see how it looks in game <laughs> and there we go we got our first decoration and it's funny because it's an image but it's cool because it will follow the rotation of the player this is solid so i believe i jump on it <laughs> yeah i can but yeah so we have that and let's try making a more interactive uh decoration so let's go back in here and we'll go and the interactive one i want to make is a rubbish bin a rubbish bin so we got our rubbish bin here i'll put this to 50 his health i want it to be breakable yep and let's import the sprites so for our rubbish bin he will have one but he also has two more frames for his death animation which is quite interesting but the death of the decoration and then for the corpse i'll use the last frame of animation just so it stays like that when it goes through its little pain uh, of being destroyed and we'll press accept to that see the scale looks nice so i got those in and let's import our sounds so so the damage sound refers to the sound it will make when it is being hit yeah like the damage sound pretty self-explanatory so we'll go damage there and then break sound will be the sound in which happens when it's fully broken death is already uh like in the death animation will play so we'll click that there awesome so we'll press accept to that and now we got our rubbish bin here i can probably put this here in the corner there and let's see what it does eh? so uh, let me just get my crowbar and we got it right there you can jump on it if i hit it see it's making a noise now cool and then that's the death animation and that breaking sound playing and since it's broken now it's not solid anymore yeah interesting so yeah that's pretty much a quick run through when it comes to making an enemy as well as importing decorations uh please have a go and jam with some more like sprites and things you may find on your guys' own i'll try and definitely provide some more when i have the time to make some more assets but um yeah that's the process of making enemies and decorations um hope you guys enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe and all that youtube stuff and i'll catch you guys in the next episode